nice treat for you all today. A double review. Two hatchbacks. Sounds really interesting, I know, but here's hatchback number one. The Ford Fiesta. Now, obviously, you can tell from the big wide body, you know, massive front splitter, massive rally wing. It's the rally version. Interestingly enough, I wasn't expecting the Fiesta rally car to be added. Aside from the fact we've already got a Fiesta, Ken Block's RX43 Fiesta, if there was any Ford rally car I was expecting him to make, it would be either the RS200, car, a car that I love, or the current Ford Puma. But no, Foxy's done us all proud. Instead of voting to put in the SUV, he's given us a nice little hot hatchback. Well, very hot, sequential gearbox, and it's quick. In fact, it does 170 miles an hour as standard, this Fiesta, which means it still falls below the 180 mile an hour barrier. So, tuned up to 214 miles an hour. Nice. The Fiesta is Ford's best-selling car ever. Seven generations, 40 years... Many, many sold. I can't remember exact figures. But it's a lot. There have... Have there been rallying Fiestas? No, I don't think so, other than this. There's been hot Fiestas, though, starting off with the original XR2, which then got upgraded to the XR2i. There was also the RS1800, the Monday STs, including the ST150 version of the Mark V, which came... Well, it was basically a baby GT40 or baby Mustang, especially when it was dark blue with white stripes, just like a GT or a Mustang. It was actually a really good car. I've actually driven a Ford Fiesta, the ST version, as a part of a little driving experience thing. It was good fun. We were only supposed to be doing slow speeds though and I accidentally gave it too much boot coming out of a slalom. So I hit 40. Not the fastest I've been in a car that I've been controlling, but it was good fun. Also my first experience of full throttle. Threw me back into my seat. I had a lot of fun in that car. Just concentrating in the slalom and stuff. Now, that was a Mark VI Fiesta ST. Came with a 1.6 litre four-cylinder engine. The Mark VII Fiesta ST, the final generation of Fiesta, was, well, different. One and a half litre engine, so smaller, with only three cylinders and a turbo. Completely chucks away everything the old Fiesta ST stood for. Well, apart from driving experience, I'm told it's still just as fun to drive as the old one. And this is the rally version of that. Looks mental. I mean, rally cars always do, but even so, square flare wheel arches, an insane diffuser, lovely big wing with flaps on the side, because why the hell not? And, best of all, big old tunnel exhaust. I really like those, because I'm a child. But one thing I love even more than wild, crazy body kit is near constant acceleration. This thing, the numbers go up on the speedo just as fast as every gear. Apart from first, I'd say it's a little slow. Constant acceleration is a rare thing to find in cars and always, always, always is a good thing. Cars tend to peter out when they're accelerating near their top speed. This just doesn't. Keeps on giving. It's great. I really like it. Corners are, well, interesting. It's pretty fun. Nice and light. You can hit the apexes quite well. And it's good. But it is too wobbly. Like, there's a lot of body roll. That's because it's a high-riding car. Because it's a rally car. It's designed to go over metre-high jumps and stuff. While there's a co-driver desperately shouting pace notes to try and make the driver not have an accident. Usually failing miserably. But, 
through the corners, if you just ignore the body roll, it's actually very fun. You feel like you're on the limit of grip, but there's so much grip that you needn't worry about sliding off or just having an accident because it's a really good cornering car. You don't actually need to use the brakes. Which is a shame because it pretty much stops on its nose. Oh well. Virtues of good handling, I'd say. Now let's see the rally car slide like all other rally cars should do. Or let's not. It's grippy. Like, look at this. Just spun off. So, we're going to try spiky tyres. Still corners pretty well with spike tyres. And that's when you can actually get it to slide fun. It's still grippy, but it slides much better. And it's still easy to get back. You just point it, turn in, handbrake, get the back out, come back. It's a point and squirt slide. And that is a good thing. It does lose a bit too much speed sideways though. And that's because it's just so grippy. Perfect for the race circuit then. This Fiesta has grown on me massively. I really like it. It's a fun, lightweight car. Good in the corners and with constant acceleration. Which means that it's even better in the corners because the moment you hit the apex and come out, you've just got a burst of power ready to just send you to the next one. In a constant cycle. And I don't want that cycle to end because, quite frankly, I am having immense fun in this. So, let's see how it does on this timed lap. Hitting all the apexes really well. does lose a bit too much speed while cornering, but it also corners really well when you lift off. Which means that you can save it in the corners really easily. Always a virtue. Brake here. That's when you have to use the brakes which are immaculate. Come on. More power along the straight. Here we go. 39.8. Really good time for a class 2 car. Especially one that's supposed to be designed for rallying. That's all from the Fiesta. Verdict on it is, really, really good car. Possibly my favourite this season. So, let's see if its rival from Toyota can change that. Let's jump into the Corolla rally car. And as I say that line, I realise I'm stupid. Because this is actually a Yaris rally car. Based on this... This is one of the um, one of the only modern homologation specials, Toyota's GR Yaris. Interestingly, this actually came a long time before the the Yaris rally car. In fact, so long before the rally car that Toyota didn't even know if they were going to make a Yaris rally car. Now there's even more versions of the Yaris GR. There's the GRMN, which is exclusive to Japan. That's the one I can think of. I'm pretty sure there's more, but maybe there isn't. It's a very nice hatchback, but... Hmm. I don't know. Let's spice things up by putting a wide body and a wing on, lifting up the suspension. Oh, I've just realised this is non-standard suspension and tuned. Allow me to fix that. Now that's fixed, I have a few choice words about the aesthetics. Let me just come into a place where it's light. Alright, we'll just look from this side. Does it not look like the wheels don't fit the arches? They should be bigger. And it should probably just not have those big arches anyway. A little bit smaller. Otherwise it looks like it's on 
roller skates and that's not a good look for a rally car however the actual main body is look at that enormous wing big full body roll cage interestingly patterned livery that's asymmetrical not sure why don't really like asymmetrical usually but this is cool and actually we've got to turn it back today so we can observe it better There we go. Look at it. It is a thing of madness and utter beauty. It very much appeals to my inner child. And every so often, that's just such a good thing. Having just got out of the Fiesta, it feels relatively slow compared to the Fiesta. But, for its class, it's actually quite quick. It's light. It's the, what am I saying? It's nice. It's basically, I'm not sure how to describe this. It's not quite constant acceleration like in the Fiesta, but it's close. And as you've just seen, fourth and above lack a bit of torque as it was struggling to get up the hill. And I would say, yeah, it does need more torque. So acceleration's like. Well, it's near constant, but it's bad acceleration to start off with, rather than good, which is what you really want in good near constant acceleration. So, a bit of a shame there. But I have to admit, by far and away, the place where I enjoy this car most of all is in the corners. It's just so good. It can take corners very quickly. Just lift off, sometimes brake, but only if you're carrying a lot of speed in. And it's just so quick. Through those corners, it's like it changes direction like it's a fly. And those things are pains in the arse to catch. In fact, I reckon if you were to race this car round a twisty circuit, it would be a pain in the arse to catch. You probably couldn't. It's just that good of a turner. What a great thing. Here we go sideways then. Okay, that was interesting. Shallow drifting, not bad. What the heck just happened? I pressed the handbrake and it was just like... Oh dear. Stick to shallow drifting, let's say. It's grippy. It's very, very grippy. Which means it does not slide. I mean, it maintains its speed quite well. But, it's just, I don't know. Like it's drifting, but its tyres are covered in treacle. It's just a bit too sticky. It sticks straight. That's what it wants to do, stay straight. Shame. Oh well, we had a similar problem with the Fiesta, and that was a nice car, wasn't it? And so is this. I reckon in long-term reviews, when we've got the turbocharger and the engine upgrade on, it'll be a joy. It's just so unfortunate that it's two miles an hour above the 180 barrier, that we can't tune it. Still, that's a problem for long-term reviews, just like the suspension. So, let's see how it is on the circuit. Here we go. Come on. Off the line. Need to carry a bit more speed, I'd say. Turning, however, it's really good. Lift. Okay. I can just lift in the corners and it actually turns slightly tighter, so that's pretty good. That was not a good corner though, I could have taken that far better. Power, here we go. Don't need to use the banking. Oh dear. Yeah, as suspected it is slower than the Fiesta because it's not tuned. 
43.2. I would say, however, for a stock car, that's pretty impressive. Especially for one with as much body roll as this. So, two good cars in a double review. Rare occasion. And that puts me in a good mood. So, thank you for watching. I still, however, think there is a Toyota that I prefer. And it's one that can drift properly. Hmm. Very quick thing. The GT86 drift car. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Yeah, this is a proper drifting car. I like it a lot.